Dynamic type is a feature that was released in iOS 7 that allows us as app developers to make our apps adapt to various size text. This means that users can scale down the text to provide more information on screen or increase it as well for, say, people with poor vision or to make it just easier to read. And I must say, as someone who doesn't exactly see with 2020 vision myself, I've certainly come to appreciate that feature. Hey everyone, this is Brian and in this screencast, I'll show you how to incorporate dynamic type into your own very own app. Incorporating dynamic type does require using text styles. iOS comes with a variety of different styles, but prior to iOS 11, only the body style updated when users increased or decreased their text size. Now with iOS 11, all 12 styles adapt according to user preference. Using one of these styles is as easy as just setting your own font. iOS 11 also allows us to automatically adjust font sizes. This means that when the user changes their font preference in the settings app, the app itself will instantly update versus having to restart the app once the preference was changed. Enabling this is just simply one click of a checkbox for each text element in Interface Builder. Of course, when dealing with larger text, your layout will need to adjust. In this screencast, we'll incorporate dynamic type into an app, and you'll see how larger text sizes will affect existing auto layout constraints. Now, before we dive into the world of dynamic type, I gotta give a big shout out to Jerry Beers. Jerry wrote the chapter in iOS 11 by Tutorials, which is the basis of this screencast. Jerry is also a video instructor here at raywindelect.com, so when you have a chance, make sure to give him a follow on Twitter. All right, let's dive into it. To get started, I'm working with an app that doesn't have dynamic type enabled. It's a medical app that lists a series of doctors. To see this with dynamic type enabled, I return to the home screen and jump over to the settings app. In the settings app, I tap general and then accessibility and then choose larger text. I turn on larger text and then increase the size of the text. Switching back to the app, you'll see that the text size hasn't changed at all in accordance to the user preference. Thankfully, this isn't a hard thing to accomplish. First in Xcode, I switch over to main.storyboard and you can see that there's a warning trailing constraints are missing on some of the views. I'll add these constraints now for the doctor scene. In the other scene, we'll handle in a different screencast. First, I select the doctor screen and in it, I select the name label. I give it a constraint. I choose a trailing constraint to the safe area for now. I select the constraint and in the size inspector, I set the first item to be a super view, the relation to be greater than or equal, and the constant to be zero. I do this for the phone, the address, the city, state, and zip code, and notes labels as well. Now with my constraints in place, I need to change the label fonts. First, I select the name label, and for the font, I make it a type of headline. By using the built-in style, I know my font will increase in size while also being legible to the end user. You can make custom fonts work with dynamic type, but that's a topic for another screencast. I also make sure that automatically adjust font size is checked. For the notes, I set it to a body style, and for the others, I set them to footnote. For more information about the styles, check out Apple's Human Interface Guidelines on Typography. Now when I run the app and select the doctor, my type increases, but unfortunately I'm seeing a little collision here. To solve this, we need to start thinking with baselines. When creating constraints between labels in a vertical direction, you might create a standard spacing constraint between the bottom of the first label and the top of the second one. This constraint will work, but as the text size changes, the spacing between the labels won't be consistent. The spacing that looks best between text that is very small is not the same spacing that will look best when the text is very large. There actually is a better way to create constraints between two text elements, and that's using standard spacing baseline to baseline constraints. When you create a baseline to baseline constraint with standard spacing, the system will take text size into account when determining how large that standard spacing should be. 
Back in my demo, I open main.storyboard. Before I can add baseline constraints between the city, state, and zip code label and the notes label, I need to adjust my existing constraints. First, I select the name label, and in the size inspector, I double-click on the bottom space to phone label constraint. I change the first item to be first baseline, and then the second item to be last baseline. Because the constant of the constraint is already set to standard, I don't need to do anything more with the system to position the labels using the best vertical spacing between them. I do this for the phone, address, and city, state, and zip code labels. I have a somewhat complicated relationship between the notes, profile image view, and the city, state, zip code labels. I want the notes label to be below the profile image view, but if the text above it gets too tall, I'll also want it to stay below the city, state, and zip code label. To do this, I add a baseline to baseline constraint between the city, state, zip code label and the notes label. I set the relation to be greater than or equal using the standard value. Next, I change the constraint between the notes top space to the profile image view and set it to have a low priority. Then I add another constraint between the notes top space to the profile image view. I give it a relation of greater than or equal and set the constant to be standard. This will keep the notes from overlapping the image view. It will also try to add a standard space below it while also allowing the notes to move down if necessary. With that done, there's just a few touch-ups left. First, I increase the horizontal compression resistance priority of the profile image view to 751 to keep it from getting compressed as the text gets larger. Next, I change the lines of the address, city, state, and zip code label to be zero, as well as the line break to be word wrap. Now I build and run, and you can see how the phone number label and the address label behave differently. Large text will clip at the edge of the phone number, but wrap to multiple lines for the address. Use whichever behavior you need in a particular situation. As you can see, incorporating dynamic type means thinking about your font choices and how you organize your constraints. This also means you should think of your layout as fluid versus static. Needless to say, Apple has some great guidelines when working with dynamic type. For instance, they emphasize that you should use only one typeface in your app in just a few font sizes. They also recommend that you use the built-in text styles whenever possible. And of course, your custom fonts should be legible. That goes without say. For more information, check out Apple's Human Interface Guidelines on Topography, as well as watch the WWDC 2017 session, Building Apps with Dynamic Type. Of course, you can keep on coming back to raywinderlich.com for more tutorials and screencasts on Dynamic Type as well. We do our best to give you top quality tutorials without the eye strain. And speaking of eyes, did you hear what happened when a lab tech fell into a lens grinder? I guess that he made a spectacle of himself. <laughs> Cheers.